You want to know who the oldest rookie in NBA history is? Want to find out who was part of the golden team that beat USA in the 04 Olympics? Or maybe you'd like to hear about the immortal player who refuses to retire from basketball. Well, buckle up, because today we are ranking the top 10 Argentinian NBA players. There haven't been too many Argentinian ballers that migrated to the NBA life. However, Argentina is well known in the basketball world for producing one of the biggest surprises in this sport's history when their national team won the gold medal in the 2004 Olympics. Now, let's start with number 10, Pepe Sanchez. Sanchez is one of the first two Argentinian players to play in the NBA. His NBA career was short, limited to just 38 games, but Sanchez can brag about the fact that he was part of the 01 Philadelphia 76ers team and for playing alongside one of the most influential players of all time, Allen Iverson. Pepe's biggest accomplishment in the league might be that he was part of the trade between the Sixers and the Hawks that brought Dikembe Mutombo to Philadelphia, a move that eventually helped the Sixers reach the NBA Finals. Pepe's stats do not impress, but he will forever be remembered for being part of the gold medal winning team of Argentina in the Olympics, and for being one of the first Argentinians to set foot on an NBA court. Which leads me to the date of October 31st of the year 2000. On this historic day for Argentinian basketball, both Pepe Sanchez and Ruben Volkovisky, the number 9 on our list, became the first Argentinians to play in the NBA. Ruben was a big power forward, standing at 6'10", who played in two NBA seasons. He was also part of the Olympic team in 2004, and he strived in the international competitions. In 2010, at the ripe old age of 37, the man scored 45 points in a game that needed four overtimes to decide the winner of the Argentinian Cup, which is pretty impressive for an old man. We now move to Facundo Compazzo, who goes number 8 on the list. Facundo put together two solid seasons, coming off the bench for the Denver Nuggets in 2021 and 2022. He was 29 years old in his rookie season, and his debut was impressive, especially for a 5'10 guard. In just 20 minutes per game for the Nuggets, he averaged 3.5 assists per game over the two seasons he played there. As a rookie in 2021, Compazzo even received some votes in the 6th Man of the Year race. His career went spiraling after he signed a contract with the Mavericks for his third NBA season, as he got waived after playing in just eight games. In an interview taken after he left the United States, Facundo said that he's now a better player than when he arrived in the NBA, after competing against the best players in the world. Campazzo is now playing great basketball for Real Madrid in the Spanish league. At number seven, let's remember Walter Hermann. Walter started his career as a stellar reserve that delivered over 9 points per game coming off the Charlotte Bobcats bench. Herman was named to the All-Rookie Second Team, he was named Rookie of the Month for March 2007, and he finished 10th in the Rookie of the Year voting. Still, his game somehow went under the radar, in an era when big men weren't yet supposed to shoot threes, but the guy averaged 46% from the three-point line in his rookie season. He then got traded to the Detroit Pistons over the next season to help one of the best reserve units of the 2000s. Walter Hermann is another member of the gold medal winning Argentina team and one of the most spectacular players around the basket who, as a big man, also made plays off the dribble. Moving to number 6, we meet Pablo Prigioni, a player with one of the highest highlights per minute ratio. Fun fact about Pablo, he is the oldest rookie in NBA's history as he entered the league at the age of 35. By the time he first played in an NBA game in 2012, Prigioni had already played at the highest level in Europe and had developed into one of the best point guards out there. His experience in Europe meant that he didn't necessarily need to prove that he could play, so the New York Knicks made him a very lucrative proposal. The Argentinian point guard made his NBA debut with the Knicks at the age where some guys are eyeing retirement and actually managed to carve himself out a decent career in the most competitive basketball league in the world. Over four seasons, which also included stints with the Houston Rockets and the LA Clippers, Prigioni embodied the stereotypical European guard, a stubborn defender who always looked for the pass and hit his open shots. In only four seasons in the league, Prigioni even had the opportunity to play all the way to the Western Conference Finals with the Rockets in 2015. Cracking the top five, we see Fabrizio Oberto, another player who started his NBA career on the wrong side of the 30s. Fabrizio Oberto may have been drafted in 1997, but he remained overseas for another eight years. This was a golden opportunity for Oberto to better learn the tactics of the game before he could make his official NBA debut. 
A 6'10 center, Alberto was a career 3.4 points per game scorer, but his impact was mostly felt as a rim protector and as a great complement to Tim Duncan in the front court. His play off the ball helped San Antonio's superb ball movement, and Alberto used to be the right guy at the right place, as he ended up either with an easy basket or an assist. Aside from also being a part of the Golden Team from the 04 Olympics, Alberto is also an NBA champion, as he helped the Spurs beat the Cavs in 07. Mostly a starter for the playoffs, Fabricio played a big role in defending Carlos Boozer and Mehmet Okur in the Western Conference Finals, only to cap it off in the finals against Cleveland with easy layups, pick and rolls, or timely assists. We'll now check out the fourth best Argentinian NBA player, who goes by the name of Carlos Delfino. Delfino was the youngest member of the 04 Olympics team, and late in 2023, at 41 years old, he declared that he will never announce his retirement. He even played for the national squad in the 2022 qualifiers for the next Olympics, and he averaged more than 12 points per game, even though Argentina failed to qualify for the final tournament. And this happened after the guy underwent six surgeries on the same foot. Delfino was drafted by the Pistons in 03, but joined them only one year later. He mostly came off the bench for the first half of his NBA career, until being traded to the Bucks in 09, where he became a starter for the next three seasons. The small forward averaged a career-high 11.5 points per game in the 2010-2011 season and displayed his scoring ability as he shot 37% from the three-point line. His NBA career came to an end with the Rockets in the 2013 playoffs when he suffered a leg injury. Before the injury, Delfino delivered his monster dunk on Kevin Durant. He was only 30 at the time, so his NBA career was cut short right in its prime. Cracking into the top three, we have Andres Nocioni, another member of the 2004 Argentina Olympics team. Nocioni was quite slow on the floor, but he made up for his lack of physical skills with grit and willingness to battle anybody. He is best known for playing on the late 2000s Bulls team that even beat the reigning champions Miami Heat in the first round of the 07 playoffs. This is the same year in which Nocioni averaged a career-best 14.1 points per game over an entire season. Nocioni used to play tough defense, hit threes, and just dive and scrap the entire game. Over his career, Andres received votes in multiple individual awards, such as Defensive, Most Improved, or Sixth Man of the Year awards. These votes stand as a testament to his play on the court, especially since he was a reserve for most of his career. After eight years in the NBA, Nocioni returned to Europe, where he won a EuroLeague title in 2015, while also earning the Final Four MVP award at 35 years old. At number two, we find Luis Scola, the second best player on the 04 Argentina team. One of the most impressive aspects of Scola's game were his footwork and post moves. His ability to navigate through defenders and finish with finesse made him a nightmare for opposing teams. Scola first played in the NBA in 2007, spending his first five years with the Rockets. He was named to the All-Rookie First Team and finished third in Rookie of the Year voting. In his best season, Scola averaged more than 18 points and 8 rebounds per game. His career also saw him playing for the Suns, Pacers, Raptors and the Nets, and he made it all the way to the conference finals, twice. Luis Scola is number one in points scored for the Argentina national team, and his prolonged career even saw him playing in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, when, at the age of 40, he was still considered the team's best player. Fans around the NBA definitely remember his scoring around the basket, and he was a mid- and close-range assassin. And we finally get to number one. To no one's surprise, Manu Ginobili. The Argentina's flying man is the first player representing the country to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and he was the driving force of the 04 Olympics team. He is widely considered the best reserve in basketball history, and he won the sixth Man of the Year award in 2008. Known for his versatility and impact off the bench, Ginobili redefined the sixth man role in the NBA. He brought a dynamic style of play, providing key contributions in scoring, playmaking, and defense, often leading the Spurs' second unit to success. Ginobili is a two-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA selection. With an NBA career spanning over 16 seasons, Ginobili won four NBA championships, one alongside fellow Argentinian Fabrizio Alberto in 07. Fun fact, Ginobili is one of only two players to have won an Olympic gold medal, an NBA championship, and a EuroLeague title. Ginobili popularized the Eurostep move in the NBA, as his crafty footwork and ability to finish in traffic became trademarks of his playing style and made him a nightmare for defenders to guard. What else is Ginobili able to do? 
Oh, man's even good at catching bats, for one. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.